So YouTube builders, I'm going to show you how to log into MS Teams using your desktop effectively. So have it open on a browser. You just go to MS Teams, Google it or whatever, or it's teams.microsoft.com slash start. And then simply you need to put in your NHS.net email address. So I'm going to do that now. When you do so, it'll take you to a part that lets you log into MS Teams. And this kind of looks like the Microsoft login. So if you use Outlook or Hotmail or stuff, it'll look fairly similar. And you just put in your email address from here. So once you put your NHS.net email address in, then you can log in. So once you've done that, it'll take you to a screen that allows you the introduction to MS Teams. Um, so you can go through this step by step. So let's do that, shall we? So um, bringing team together, collaborative workspace effectively allows you to chat to other people in different groups, um, allows you to connect through others through online meetings, and this can be video meetings as well. Um, it allows you to store stuff like files, notes, apps even, and things. And then it basically says, let's get going. You could play a video that shows you the introduction. Um, I'm not going to click on that yet because you'll be able to see this yourself. I'm just click let's go. It shows you what you need to do. So you can download the app onto your phone. I would highly recommend doing so if you're the type of person who likes to be connected to your work stuff and not rely on desktops and things. It's your choice. Um, I'm not going to click that today. And it gives you various different instructions of things you can do. Just a really quick walk through what you need to look at. So generally, when you're looking at finding stuff, you can use the command toolbar, which is, you know, if you use Google, it's like the Chrome bar at the top. It's the overriding search thing that lets you search for anything. Pretty much you type it in and it will find it. Um, you've got the chat, which is the equivalent to WhatsApp. Um, you've got your team section, which will be populated as time goes on. You do need to enter a team code in order to join. Um, I'll show you this in a separate video. Um, and you've got your course section, which logs all the various different calls and things that you've got. Uh, file section, which is where you can store all your information. But effectively, this is what your Teams is going to look like when you log in. So just before we finish up, I'm just going to show you a few quick setting changes I would highly recommend that you do when you're using MS Teams. And this is initially when you sign on. So first thing you need to go is top right hand corner, go to the settings icon. Now you can see this has changed slightly because I'm using a different login um, and click on it. Uh, this allows you to go to the settings options. Um, you can change your picture before you do this. Um, so as you can see, I've now got my EGP learning icon here, whereas previously I had my Dr. Gandalf one, um, and that can be useful to do. Um, but effectively, go into the settings box, and it allows you to change various different things. So you can change the theme. So if you don't like the kind of standard theme, you can go for the dark or the high contrast ones. I must admit, on my mobile phone, I tend to use the dark theme because I find that more appealing and easier to use. You can change privacy settings, and this is more around things like read receipts for the messages that you send in chat, and also for other functions for MS Teams contacting you. But the main thing you need to have a look at is your notifications. So um, when MS Teams wants to contact you and let you know that you've had various things happen, whether that's in your chats, in your Teams, in your channels, and various other things, it sends you a notification. The default thing has many of these, so that it sends you an email. And as you can imagine, most clinicians hate getting lots and lots of email for no reason. So I would highly recommend that you change a lot of these settings to something that doesn't include email, unless it's something that you feel you really need notifying about and email is the best way to do that for you. So as you can see for mine, most of mine are banner. So what that means is in the bottom right hand corner, whenever I get a message or I get one of these notifications pinging up, I'll get a banner coming up that basically tells me I've had a notification for whatever that might be. So that's things for like personal mentions, channel mentions and team mentions but also for messages and stuff like that. Um, for other kind of things that I feel are less important, I don't need notifying about specifically. I just have it set to default to only show in feed. So at least I've got a record of it, but it's not popping up and pinging up. And as many of you know, for my productivity things, less pop-ups you've got, it's always a good thing. So always make sure you notify the things that's important to you. The other thing is missed activity. Um, I set that for daily at the moment, whilst I'm getting to know how the Teams and stuff works effectively for me. That may change over time. That may go down to less frequent or more frequent, depending on what we need to know. And I guess that those are simple changes I would recommend making. There is an additional section about calls, and you can have a look at that if you want to. So this is if somebody rings you, what you do with your voicemail, that kind of stuff, and you can configure it there. Um, it's pretty simple to use. I've not had a play around with it yet. My main thing is on the voicemail, I've had it set for the text to speech customized greeting of simply message me if you want, because I'll reply through that mechanism, because that's how I like to get my messages rather than calls. So that's the basic kind of settings change I would recommend making. If when you sign into Teams itself, you don't have the Teams thing here,
then click on the ellipsis, these three little dots, and it will bring you options for adding apps. So you can add the teams. And then if you right click on the selected icon, it pins it so it will stay there. So you don't have to keep finding it. And that's the case with most things, whether it's teams, channels, whatever, that simple process works. If whenever you see these three little dots, click on it, it gives you more options in terms of what you can do. We will cover this for you in a more detailed video that we've got coming up with uh, other people as well. So myself, Andy, and a gentleman called Matt Fado, who some of you may be aware of. We're going to cover this in more detail for you in an upcoming video and show you how to use the more detailed functions of teams and channels, which is the key function that this platform will allow you to do, as well as the video calling in our next video. So make sure you stick around for that. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to contact me, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever platform you prefer. Some of you may also have access to me on Teams. Hey, go for it if you want. And as always, here to try and help save you and your patient's time by taking hands in your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.